Hey, greetings, everybody in the Be the Hero Beating Pre-Diabetes Group, Dr. Topher Fox coming to you from Superior, Colorado, endocrinologist. And today we are going to talk about pre-diabetes, pre-diabetes basics. You know, it's something that there, there have been a lot of people in this group and I get a lot of questions things like why why do we care about prediabetes you know can it be reversed how is it diagnosed and you know as this group grows i thought we could take a step back and just i want to run you through some slides today so usually i try just to show you my smiling face but today i'm going to give you a little bit more uh, slide material and shoot you can let me know in the comments if you like this type of presentation better because my team and i really are here to to serve you ultimately to help you be the hero in your own life, to be able to show up in the way that you want for the people that you love or your business or your career, whatever is important. We want you to be the hero in your own life. And when you have good health, you can show up in that way. So let me start with a story and I'm going to jump behind the slides here as uh, I chat. So, you know, it was actually interesting probably around 1995, I was interviewing for residency and I had a chance to travel to Arizona and I brought my backpacking gear when I went and I spent four days kind of on a little mini vacation in the Superstition Mountains. This was in January in Arizona. And for these four days, I really didn't see another person until the very last day. So it was an interesting time, the longest time I've ever spent by myself. But on that last day, as I was hiking out of the mountains and going back to my car, I had to travel up a uh, kind of up over this little mountain pass. Uh, I'm from Colorado, so I used the term mountain pass. It was probably only 100 feet of elevation change or 200 feet. So not a Colorado mountain pass, but an Arizona mountain pass. We had to go up. I had to go up over this mountain pass and it was kind of foggy and rainy. And as I started down the other side, the trail was just a lot harder to follow. And it got fainter and fainter. And I was having to drop over these drop-offs and I was slipping and I hurt my knee. And after going down for about 20 minutes, it hit me. I am on the wrong path. I'm on the wrong path. I am off course. And so I had to reverse course, travel back up this kind of treacherous hillside. And sure enough, at the top of the pass, the trail had turned left and I'd gone right and ended up going down the wrong path. Well, if you have been diagnosed with, pre, with pre-diabetes, you might have felt like, gosh, you know, I'm on the wrong path. I am on the wrong path. And the, the great thing about pre-diabetes, this is why I get so excited about helping folks with pre-diabetes is that pre-diabetes, it's a great signal. It's a call to action. You know, it's a time to say, gosh, I'm on this path. It's taking me where I don't want to go, but there are tremendous tools and tremendous opportunity for you to be able to get on a different path to reverse course and be able to help yourself. So pre-diabetes is this, is this time when we can say, gosh, let's choose a right path, let's choose a different path. And so this group is all about what are the skills and tools that you need to choose that different path. So let's just answer some basic questions today. So first, how is prediabetes diagnosed? What is prediabetes? Well, prediabetes these days is primarily diagnosed in two ways. Prediabetes can be diagnosed based on fasting blood sugar. So fasting blood sugar should be below 99. If you are at 126 or higher, we call that diabetes. And then the in-between range, 100 to 125, we call prediabetes. Now, ideally, prediabetes would be confirmed with at least two measurements, same thing for diabetes. And then there's another number that you may have heard of called the hemoglobin A1C, or just A1C for short. We're going to talk about what that actually is, what that number actually means here on the next slide. But normal would be 5.6% or below. And if you are at 6.5% or higher, we call that diabetes. And again, prediabetes is going to be this in-between range, 5.7 to 6.4%. So what 
exactly is this thing called the A1C? Well, the A1C is really interesting. The A1C actually looks at your red blood cells. So in this example, you can see these little circles with the spikes. Those are your red blood cells. They have hemoglobin in them. They carry oxygen uh, in your blood to all the parts of your body. And these little red blood cells, they have proteins on the outside. And these proteins you can think of as these little spikes or, or sticks. There's a lot of these proteins. And the, uh, the blood sugar, which is these little dark circles, if it hits a particular protein just right, it gets stuck on there. So it hits, it gets stuck. And once it gets stuck, it doesn't come off. Well, it turns out that because the blood cells live for around three months, if we look at how many of these proteins have a sugar stuck on them, because the more sugar is in your blood, the more often this happens. If we look at how often or how many of these proteins, what percentage of these proteins have a sugar stuck on them, we can get an average of your three month blood sugar or an estimate of the average of your three month blood sugar. Now, of course, this number is not perfect. For example, people maybe who are going through chemotherapy or who get a blood transfusion have blood cells that are living for a different amount of time and therefore the A1C might not be accurate. But in general, the A1C is going to measure how many sugar molecules are stuck on this particular protein and it's gonna give an estimate of the three month blood sugar. Now, people will ask, does prediabetes convert into diabetes? And the, the answer is yes, it actually does. And if we look at two ranges of people, so take that A1C again and look at 5.5. So that's gonna include some people who are in the upper end of normal, but look at 5.5 to 6.0. And we'll see that somewhere between nine and 25% of those people over the next five years will convert into, into diabetes. Now, people who are a little higher in the range, 6 to 6.4% will convert at a higher rate, so 25 to 50%. And we know that people who have uh, diabetes, there's a number of things that we don't want to have happen that can happen. So two to four times the risk of dying of heart disease. We know that more than two thirds of people, uh, older folks with diabetes, people over the age of 65 who have diabetes will die of heart disease and another one six will die of stroke. And we know that people who have diabetes have much higher healthcare costs. So about $7,900 per year and about 1,900 of that is out of pocket. And these numbers are a couple years old. So they're likely a little bit higher right now. But of course, we also know that when we have prediabetes that there's a number of other things that are probably equally important if not more important to your day-to-day -day life. And these just include things like fatigue, difficulty, losing weight, joint pain, disrupted sleep. And that just all of those things lead to a loss of motivation, a loss of joy, a loss of happiness. And we don't want that. So we want to choose that different path, right? We want to get on a different path. Now, I'm not a very pessimistic guy. I tend to be an optimist and an encourager. And so I want to encourage you today to say that you can reverse prediabetes. I've seen it done. I've seen it done many, many times. I've helped many people uh, to do it, probably hundreds of people, if not thousands, but let's just say several hundreds of people to be able to reverse prediabetes. So Helen Keller said, optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. So I want to give you hope and I want to give you confidence that yes, you can reverse prediabetes. So you don't have to take this path to diabetes. And one of the best studies that showed this is possible is a study called the Diabetes Prevention Project. This study was published now almost 20 years ago. And it took people who had a particular flavor of prediabetes and it broke them into three groups. And so these three groups got what we call the placebo group, nothing special. Metformin, this group got put on a medicine that treats diabetes treats blood sugar, treats insulin resistance. And a third group got intensive lifestyle counseling and coaching. And specifically this lifestyle group lost 7% of their body weight. So for most of you, 10 or 15 pounds, and they exercised 150 minutes per week. Now I'm gonna show you two slides. What we can see in this first one 
is that the percentage of people who went on to develop diabetes, you can see in the placebo group here, metformin definitely reduced, but you'll see the lifestyle group was the lowest of all three. And specifically, the reduction in diabetes was 31% with metformin and 58% with lifestyle. So this study really taught us that healthy lifestyle choices, nutrition, movement, sleep, doing the proper things for these three things, it's a super powerful tool, super powerful weapon. And we want to unleash these tools onto all of our bodies so that we can be at our best physically. Now in this same study, let's just focus on the bottom frame here. The top frame uh, really looks at that same data. So what percentage went on to develop diabetes Gosh, if we look at those who were at the higher risk, we can see nothing special, 60%, lifestyle, 20%. So one third the likelihood of developing diabetes in that group. But we wanna look at the bottom, in particular, this blue line. This is the percentage of people who had prediabetes in this study who actually reverted to normal glucose tolerance. They reverted to normal, they reversed prediabetes. And again, depending on the risk, we can see between 30 and 60%, let's just call it 45% overall, were able to successfully reverse prediabetes in this study just using healthy lifestyle. So again, prediabetes, kind of a choice, kind of a path. And so this group, this group is really designed to, to help you, to help you get on that right path. It's designed to help you reverse prediabetes. It's designed to get you where you want to go with your health so that you can be the hero in your own life. And so this group really is for you if you feel like your metabolism is broken and you are not able to get the results that you want by following particular dietary approaches. This group is for you if you've tried all the different things, you've tried all the different approaches, keto, whole food, plant-based, Mediterranean, and nothing seems to be getting you the results. It is for you if you feel like you just don't have enough willpower, you don't have the uh, ability to make the right choices. You don't have the strength to make the right choices. We're gonna blow that myth right out of the water you do. We just need better tools than relying on willpower. So this group is really for you if you are looking to reverse prediabetes. So as I wrap up for today, I do want to ask you one question, which is, and if you would, in the comments down below, let me know if we looked at those three pillars of healthy metabolism, nutrition, movement, exercise, so nutrition, movement, exercise, or sleep. Nutrition, movement, or sleep. Which of these three do you feel like you need the most help with? Which of these three is most important to you to have training about nutrition, about exercise, about optimizing your sleep? I would love for you to be able to let me know. And I won't be here live next Friday, or the Friday after, but I will be uh, posting periodically in the group through the holidays, taking a little time with the family. So do check back into the group. And as always, I want to wish you peace through this holiday season. And until we meet again, I just, yeah, wish you peace, take care. And thanks for being here today. All right, signing out, doctor.